Hello, my brothers and sisters. The Lord be in your mind and in your heart and also on your lips as well. And may all his peace and blessings be with you. Amen. This teaching is going to be about the priesthood and the priest that the Lord established in his church and the priesthood he left behind through the apostles and, all, and with the apostles as well. And the priesthood that still continues from uh, to this day all the way down uh, to the apostles Jesus himself established. And this teaching might seem a little foreign to you guys, I mean, who have not grown up in a Catholic church, or probably Protestant, or uh, I guess Pentecostal, it doesn't matter what denomination you all are, um, as long as your love and faith in the Lord are evident. But there are still um, teachings that have been missing uh, from the early church the church that the Lord established and some of those teachings have been lost because of denomination or opinions of men or pride self-righteousness uh, and all those things that come with that and all it does is just divide the Lord's body but the Lord is now asking us to to repair his church repair the breach uh, that was broken through through man's fallen nature through his pride, his greed and lust, and his opinion, um, opinion based faith, not on the faith that the Lord taught and on the foundation uh, that the apostles of Jesus established through the Holy Spirit. And so the Lord is wanting to bring that back to us, the priesthood and what it means to be a priest. Uh, in the order of Melchizedek, the eternal priesthood through Jesus Christ. Not like the old priesthood that uh, Moses established with the Levites and um, with Aaron being the first high priest. No, this is a new priesthood, a royal priesthood, a priesthood from God that has been given to a uh, man through Jesus Christ to help continue the work of the gospel, spread the work, spread the gospel as well. And also, um, also uh, call the men, call mankind to salvation. And Jesus himself was a priest because he exercised uh, the authority of a priest during his life on earth, healing the sick, forgiving the sins of men, and um, and, uh, you know, I guess dying and atoning for the sins of mankind. So what is a priest? Basically, uh, the simplest definition that I can give you, a priest is basically someone who acts on behalf of God for the people. And also he acts uh, on behalf of the people uh, before God. It's, so it's kind of like a back and forth scenario. You go before God on behalf of the people, and you go before the people on behalf of God. It was even said that um, the priests in the old days would come before God carrying rocks on his back. The rocks represented the sins of man of uh, those uh, the, of the people. It represented the sins of the people and also his own sins, and he went before God to gain pardon. So it's kind of like a mediator or uh, an advocate, someone who goes be before someone on your behalf. Like God speaks through your behalf to the people, and you speak to God on behalf of the people. Kind of like that. Um, and Jesus himself exercised his priesthood. Because when he came to earth, he came demonstrating God's love and mercy, speaking on behalf of God to the people, and also praying on behalf of the people to God. When he even told the paralytic man, child, your sins are forgiven you. Meaning, on behalf of God, I forgive you of your sins. And they, they're like, why is this man blaspheming? Only God can forgive sins. 
And yes, only God can forgive sins. But now the Lord has also uh, administered or entrusted the sacrament of reconciliation to us also. So we can act on behalf of the Lord. Because Jesus says, whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven them. Whoever sins you retain, they are retained. Jesus was ordaining the apostles as priests. And the Lord still ordains priests who, who will be his friends and suffer with him and offer with him to the Father the sacrifice of salvation, the body and blood of Christ, to obtain forgiveness and mercy. Jesus is our true high priest. He stands before the Father, offering the sacrifice of his life, his body, and his blood, his hands, his wounds, the wounds in his body. They are a plea before the Father on our behalf. He goes to make intercession for us. Basically, Jesus is acting now in heaven as a true high priest. If you remember, uh, in the time of Moses, only the only the high priest could enter into the Holy of Holies and, and offer the holy sacrifice. The priests, however, were allowed, were permitted to, um, to offer sacrifice, not only for their sins, but also for the sins of the people as well. And so I'm just going to go in a little more depth to um, show you what I mean by that. So Jesus Christ, right, Jesus, the Savior of mankind, the Son of God, came to earth as a full human being. He had to come as a full human being in order to redeem humanity and also to make intercession for humanity. Jesus, being God, humbled himself and became a man, meaning he exposed himself to weakness, poverty, hunger, temptation, thirst, tiredness, heat, cold, um, sickness, whatever you name it, whatever we experienced on this earth, Jesus also experienced it. He subjected himself to it, conquered it, even sin itself, because he was also subjected and allowed to be tempted by the devil. He faced it, conquered it, and submitted fully to the Father. Therefore, he made reparation for the sins of humanity, especially the sin of disobedience, because Jesus totally obeyed the Father's will in everything that he did. He never disobeyed the Father. He always submitted to the Father's will. And, he, and he, by this, Jesus made reparation for all of the sins of disobedience, especially Adam's disobedience, as well as Eve's. He, also made reparation for those sins as well, which elevated mankind to be able to be with God. Now, no, not only did he make reparation for the sins of disobedience, but also for the sins of uh, adultery, lust, lying, stealing, cheating, whatever. So through all these things, Jesus fully redeemed mankind. Because through his passion, Jesus suffered and atoned for specific sins that mankind committed. And the only way that it can atone for these sins is through blood. Because blood is the life, a life for the life. It shows God's hatred for sin, but also his love in wanting to redeem mankind. Jesus, being the bridge between the Father and humanity, offered his, su his sufferings and his sacrifice and his life to bridge the gap between the Father and mankind. This makes Jesus a high priest. He's offering his life on our behalf. And he's also speaking to us on behalf of the Father. So Jesus is the true high priest in heaven. And he has ordained priests through his own, um, by his own priesthood and his own authority to help reconcile humanity with the Father. And this 
true priesthood, which comes from the order of Melchizedek, the eternal priesthood, is from Jesus Christ himself, because he lives forever. So his priesthood is eternal, so he is always able to save us. And so Jesus established this priesthood when he um, breathed on the apostles. And let me show you what I mean. Let's go to John. The book, the Gospel of John. And I believe it is in John John chapter 20. Yeah, it's in John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. It says, On the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had gathered were locked because of the, their fear of the Jews. Jesus then came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Peace be with you, Jesus said to them again. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Listen to that. The Father sent Jesus. So he spoke on God's behalf. He says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. So now, the priest of Jesus go and speak on his behalf to the people and they come in Jesus to the Father to speak on the behalf of the people to the Father in Jesus Christ because he says remain in me as I remain in you and listen, and listen to what he says after this it says after saying this he breathed on them and said receive the Holy Spirit if you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you retain anyone's sins, they are retained. Basically, Jesus ordained them as priests. Jesus ordained the apostles as priests, and so the apostles also ordained others as priests, which make up the whole priesthood of Christ. Now, if one is ordained as a priest, basically your life is consecrated to the service of God and the service of the people. Because Christ said, I came not to serve myself, I came to serve. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. The life of a priest is also a life of humility, like a, a life of meekness, holiness, because you go before God on behalf of the people and you speak to the people on behalf of God so you have to be holy and pure and also a life of sacrifice because you're not serving yourself anymore rather you are serving others you are serving God and you are serving others he is giving you what you need so that you can be a true uh, spiritual parent father or mother to those whom the Lord has entrusted to you. Now here's what, uh, here's here are the duties of a priest, of the new priesthood, according to the one that Jesus, our Lord, set up. Here's here's what it says. Now this this speaks about the the, the priesthood of Jesus Christ, the Lord our God. So this is Hebrews 4, Hebrews 4 beginning at verse 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession of faith. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses 
but one who has been tested in every respect as we are, but without sinning. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace when we are in need of help. Every high priest is taken from among, taken from among men to, re, to represent them in their dealings with God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with those who are ignorant and misguided, since he himself is subject to weakness. And as a result of this, he must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. Moreover, one does not assume this position of honor on his own initiative, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. Even Christ did not confer upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest. Rather, he was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, let us, let us now, uh, let us now step back for a moment because there are two there are many duties of a priest according to God's order according to one who has been appointed by God first he is full of compassion not because you know he sees weak people or you know um, sympathize you know that they're weak and he's strong rather he's he is able to sympathize with with them because he himself is also weak so he can understand them and so he must be non-judgmental at at all cost no priest is ever put in a position to judge people or to belittle them whatsoever otherwise the Lord will swiftly remove you the Lord makes you weaker than all so that you can learn to sympathize with all and God may show mercy on them through you not because you're better or smarter or holier because you are the weakest and the most in, uh, infirm and wretched of all now listen to what it says in Hebrews 5 it says every priest is taken from among men to represent them in their dealings with God meaning you are a, re are a representative of the people before God and you are coming before the Lord on their behalf to offer their prayers whatever they need to the Lord and ask for his direction for them and also offer gifts and sacrifices for sins now obviously Christ has sacri offered his the sacrifice of his life once and for all so we don't need to continue continually offer offering sacrifices after sacrifice. No. Now under this priesthood, the priesthood of Christ, we offer the Father the body and blood of Jesus, His only begotten Son, as the sacrifice for our sins. Does that mean that Christ has to come down and die every time for our sins? No. Christ lives forever, so His sacrifice is forever. We're just continually offering it to the Father on behalf of us, on behalf of the people. Listen to what He says. It says, Hebrews 5 verse 2 says, He is able to deal patiently with those who are ignorant and misguided, since He Himself is subject to weakness. Meaning you are no better than the people you are representing. You are no better in the eyes of God or in the eyes of the people. In fact, you may be even worse, and God may be showing mercy and giving hope to them through you and your wretchedness. And it says, as, as a result of this, he must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. And one does not gain this position of honor on his own initiative, but only when called by God meaning Jesus Christ was called by God and those who are true priests will also be called by Jesus 
<clears throat> and so the Lord also um, gave me a message. The Father also, Father God, also gave a message of what it is to be a true priest um, according to his standards, according to the, the priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, and how we are to act as priests. Now, not everyone may be ordained. You may not have a physical priesthood, you know, to, um, to uh, I guess, operate in. However, all of your sufferings, your prayers for other people, um, your toil, bringing their needs before God, praying for them, not just for yourself, all of those uh, needs are, all of those things are spiritual acts of a priest. So many people may be pr priests spiritually and may not even know it. You don't have to just uh, exhibit the signs of a priesthood or be ordained to, um, I guess, absolve sins or lift up Jesus Christ in the Eucharist in order to be a priest. You can also stand in the gap for others by praying for them to the Lord, offering your sufferings and your, uh, your talents, your time, everything to the people on behalf of God. And in this way, your priesthood will be a spiritual one, not just a physical one, even if you are not ordained as a priest. And the Lord will be pleased with that, and He may call you up even higher so that you can do even more for others. And so this is what the, the Father has to say, according to those who are priests. And um, I was just uh, praying on behalf of the people, offering the Father the, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, the body and blood of Jesus Christ for the sins of mankind and for also my sins as well and asking that the Lord will pardon us and have mercy on us and here's what the father uh, said he said to be a priest is a great honor and many of my servants are ignorant of how great the responsibility they have when you are a priest you come to me meaning the father on behalf of humanity in Jesus and you go to humanity on behalf of me in Jesus. You become his hands and feet in this world. The offering of his sacrifice to me is powerful when done in authentic belief and humility of heart, as well as the offering of yourselves for others and for my holy will. Because Christ himself offered himself completely to the Father and submitted to the Father's will in all things. And so he continues, In this way you become one with him, and he offers himself to me through you. As you become more devoted to my will and the care, and the care of others, the image of Christ shines within you. And the care of others, the image of Christ shines within you. I am then able to do wonders through such a soul and manifestations of my spirit become seen in the natural realm as, such as miracles, healings, the holy stigmata of my son and more. And for many of you who do not know what the holy stigmata is, it's the imprint of the uh, wounds of Jesus Christ on the hands and feet. Many may not receive it uh, physically in their body, but every, every priest whom the Lord has called has a spiritual stigmata. This disposition of a soul glorifies my, my name, and I heap upon it all the graces of love and mercy, and it shines out upon others, because we're not called to just keep all of the love and the graces God gives us for ourselves, rather to be given to the people so that the Lord can show his love and his mercy to the people and not just for ourselves. It's not good to be stingy. So the Father continues, From there you shall do as he did, Jesus Christ. He, Jesus, went about doing good, 
and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. This was not given to you because you were smarter, holier, better, or more virtuous than others. No, the priest I chose for my son were the weakest of all. Why? So that they sympathized with the weaknesses of others who become vessels of my love, compassion, and mercy, not wrath, judgment, and anger. This is why I must deepen your humility and compassion before I can exalt you. Remember, you didn't choose me. I chose you, unworthy as you are though. All of my priests are called to intercede for mankind. Therefore, always see yourselves at the feet of others as their slaves. Learn to be meek and humble of heart as my son. As evil increases in the world, I want all of my priests before me, crying out for the sins of humanity as well as their own, offering me the sacrifice of my son with deep contrition and humility. Sorry, offering me the sacrifice of my son with deep contrition and humility of heart for the souls of all mankind. You were not put into this position for your own selfish purposes, rather for the accomplishment of my will and the salvation of souls. Renounce yourself in order that Christ may live in you. Accept whatever my will is as he did. Many may be called to suffer my justice for sinners. Many may comfort me and experience, and experience the burning love I long to lavish on my creatures. Trust in my goodness whatever I ask of you, and you shall be to me my beloved son or daughter in whom I am well pleased.